Everton are in a relegation battle, whether we like to believe it or not. So what's gone wrong at Everton and what does this mean for the rest of the season? What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Outside Football. This is part of the new brand of content we're trying to do here in 2021. More team based videos um, and then more of me and Harry just sort of getting on here and talking some shit. Um, but today, obviously, me being an Everton fan, I want to sort of go through exactly what's going on at Everton Football Club, because I guess this season has been an amount amalgamation of everything that has come before it. Ever since Farhad Mashiri has come into the club, it's been sort of a disaster. Money doesn't make everything better, and I think that's something that Newcastle fans will learn to expect. Um, but for people who don't necessarily know what's going on at Everton and people who want to sort of know what's happening, this is the video for you. So we're going to be breaking down this video into a couple of different topics and talking about them individually, but eventually they'll all lead into this season and exactly why we're in a relegation battle in the league. Uh, so to start everything off, let's talk about the board slash director football. One of the biggest problems that Everton fans have with the club at the moment is the board um, and how they've run things at the club. So if you don't know, a couple of years ago, or I think like five, six years ago now, Farhad Mashiri came into the club and purchased a, uh, a majority stake in, in Everton Football Club. The club was before owned by Bill Kenwright, who didn't have the most money in the world, but sort of kept the club afloat by selling players like Wayne Rooney um, in order to fund the club's transfer business and the overall running of the club. Uh, when Farhad Mashiri came in, we knew he had a lot of money. He originally came from the Arsenal board. He wanted a football club and he wanted to sort of control what was happening at a football club and Everton prevent, uh, sort of presented that opportunity. Everton being one of the biggest clubs in English football, it was a sort of an idea that we were a sleeping giant. We were a club that was waiting investment. And once we got that investment, then we would push and be the, the club that we are meant to be. Everton, if you don't know, one of the most successful clubs in English football, um, never been relegated from the top flight of the English pyramid, which is at stake right now. Um, and, and Farhad Mashiri sort of came in and injected that, that, that cash that we needed. So at the moment, the big problem is the board. The board, there's three people on the board. There's Bill Kenwright, there, there's Farhad Mashiri, who is obviously the, the majority owner. There's Denise Barrett-Baxendale, which is the CEO. Um, and, and essentially right now, it's sort of just a, a, a boys club. Uh, Graham Sharp has been appointed onto the board as well. And I think that the main thing that Everton fans have and the problem that they have with the board is this mentality that this club is making all of the wrong choices. We're making all the wrong mis We're making so many mistakes. There's so many uh, problems with this football club at the moment. You look at Denise Barrett-Baxendale and while she, we don't know if she's good at her job or not, but from what we can see, she's trying to run a charity. She's not trying to run a football club, which is one of my personal main issues with her as CEO is that Everton is so focused on Everton in the community. And while yes, we do a lot for the, for the wider community of Liverpool, we're a football club. We should be focused on the football club first and focused on all the other things separately, which is not happening at the moment. I think that you see uh, the, the problems with Bill Kenwright and the problem with Bill, Bill Kenwright is, well, yes, he's done a lot for the club in terms of servicing and injecting his own um, uh, finances into the club for so many years. The problem with him is that he's stuck in the old ways of doing things. He, and 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 while well, yes, people are saying, oh, Bill Kenwright, you'd want him at your football club. You'd want him because he's a great negotiator. We don't see that. We don't have any communication from board level to the fans. And if we do get communication from the board level to fans, it's it's through a medium like TalkSport. Farhad Mashiri always goes to his, his mate Jim White at TalkSport to talk to the fans. We want direct communication from the board to the fans so that we know what's happening with our football club. Because at the end of the day, we are still going to be here when Bill Kenwright leaves, when Farhad Mashiri leaves, when Denise Barrett-Baxanel leaves, when Rafa, Rafa Benitez leaves. We are still going to be here. So we deserve to know more than any of these other people know. And I think that at a board level, there needs to be someone there with pedigree. There needs to be someone there with experience. And while, yes, Graham Sharp is a great person. He's an Everton legend. He's someone that talks critically about the club, which is something that I think we definitely need at board level. So I'm not criticizing his appointment to the board at all. I'm saying we need more than just people who have been in and around Everton Football Club. We need people with connections with the wider football landscape, people who can get Everton in the room, uh, people who can get Everton in the conversation, whether that be through sponsorships whether that be through negotiation or or whatever that may be we need people on our board that are recognized figures in the football world people that will 
bring some respect to Everton Football Club, which we don't have right now. You look at the, all of the people that are on our board right now. They are people who have been in and around Everton Football Club. So the people that they know, the connections that they have are the same connections with the other people on the board. So the board is, a main, is, is one of the main problems with Everton Football Club right now, being too stuck in the past and afraid to move forward and evolve with, the, with football, pretty much. The next one in terms of the board as well as director of football, Marcel Brands has left the club. He was a board member and the problem with Marcel Brands was not Marcel Brands. Well, granted a little bit might have been his fault, but he wasn't able to do his job. A lot of our signings were Farhad Mashiri signings. Alex Awobi, for example, for 30 million, that was a Farhad Mashiri signing. Uh, if you remember a couple of days ago on deadline day, Everton were pushing hard to sign Wilfred Zaha, a Farhad Mashiri signing. Currently, look at the current signings that we've just made, uh, Vitaly Miklenko and Nathan Patterson, they are Marcel Brands scouted signings. And look at the different profile, Alex Awobi, 25 years old, rival Premier League club, hasn't really done anything at Arsenal, but maybe he can do something at Everton Football Club, 30 million pound. Wilfred Zaha, Crystal Palace, legend, right? A star for Crystal Palace, their captain. Went to Manchester United, never really did it. Came back to Palace and has sort of been stuck in that limbo. He's 28, 29 years old. We were going to sign him for something stupid like 50 million pounds. Farhad Mashiri has a lot of money, but he's not a football man. He doesn't have a football brain, which is why we appointed a director of football like Marcel Brands. I think the only summer where we sort of, folk, like Marcel Brands had any say was the first summer with Marco Silva, where we signed players like Luca Dean, Andre Gomez on loan, Yeri Mina, Bernard. You look at that window and you think that's a pretty good window. That's not a bad transfer window. You, we've had bad transfer windows in the past and we'll get to that. But I think that the director of football, the problem with Marcel Brains is that he just didn't speak up. He didn't have the nut, he didn't have the balls to sort of say, put his foot down and be like, this is who I want. These are the signings. This is the profile of signing we need, which is what we thought we were getting. With the director of football, we thought we were getting a, a, a man, a football man who's done it in the past, who will have a profile of who he wants to sign for Everton, how he wants the academy to be run, and then we go from there. We think we, we thought we'd have a, a director of football who had a system that he wanted to play and he'd implement that, that from the board level down. And that just didn't happen. And that's in, in part down to Marcel Braz not having the guts to sort of put himself forward and put his philosophy forward. But it's also down to Farhad Mashiri and the board as well. So again, the board and the director of football go hand in hand. I think Everton Football Club do need the director of football model. I think that what Manchester United have with, with the appointment of Ralph Ragnick and having him be their sort of technical director or, or director or, or football or however you want to describe it, he has a way of playing, he has a philosophy and he'll get the players and he'll get the manager that will implement that philosophy for the football club. And that's what Everton need now more than ever. You, you look at Everton and you think, who is an Everton signing? Who, what is an Everton player? And you can't really define that. Different managers have had different Everton Everton players and and that comes down from director of football And if our director of football hasn't implemented that in the five years he's been here or the four years he's been here Then that's a problem So not only the board has been shit the director of football has been shit But so have the managerial choices of these people Let's start from the end of David Moyes, because that's sort of kind of more, well, I'd say maybe the end of Roberto Martinez is, 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 is more likely. So Roberto Martinez had his worst season at Everton. Farhad Mashiri came in at the end of that season and sacked Roberto Martinez. Farhad Mashiri always wanted this Hollywood manager for Everton, right? And it was this idea that you'd get a guy in who romanticizes the football club and makes and, and, and sort of has that aura about them and we got Ronald Koeman. Granted, Ronald Koeman did fairly well with Southampton. He was a manager that was on the up and we got him from Southampton. I was quite happy with the appointment when it happened. I think that Ronald Koeman, the problem with him is that he was always looking for the Barcelona move. He was looking at Everton Football Club as a, as a three year stepping stone to get to Barcelona. And I think that was the problem that the fans had with him. And I think that was his downfall overall. He wasn't fully invested into the project that Everton Football Club was because at that point in time, it was a project. We, we just come off David Moyes. We just come off Roberto Martinez, 
who had uh, one great season and two very poor seasons. So Ronald Koeman sort of came in and he was meant to be the guy. Granted, that first season was a really, really good season, I would say. We got into Europe. Uh, we had the signings of Idrissa uh, Gane Gay, who, who, who was one of our best signings, one of the best Farhad Mashiri signings. Um, and then as well as that, in that in that Ronald Koeman era, we signed up Steve Walsh. And we'll get to that second summer window when we talk about the squad and the signings and that sort of stuff. But Ronald Koeman never really worked out because he wasn't really invested into Everton Football Club. Uh, you had Ronald Koeman leave. And then as soon as Ronald Koeman left, then you had Sam Allardyce. And obviously Sam Allardyce, he, the problem with Sam Allardyce wasn't Sam Allardyce in, in a way, right? He did the job. He kept Everton up. We didn't get relegated. He did his job. That season, we could have got Europe if Sam Allardyce played better football. But he's a man who won't play better football. And we didn't get Europe that season because he refused to play better football. Therefore, he left the club. There was an option there for him to continue at the club. He could have stayed if he made Europe. But he refused to because the football and the philosophy and the style of football he played just meant that we couldn't win more games. He won the games that he needed to. And that was it. So that was the end of Sam Allardyce. After Sam Allardyce, you, we got Marco Silva. And I liked Marco Silva. I think that Marco Silva was a decent Everton manager. I think he worked well with Marcel Brands. The problem with Marco Silva is that, one, he didn't endear himself to the fans. He didn't have the personality. He wasn't someone that we could, we could get behind. But as well as that, his style of football just didn't work with the players that we had. Um, you had a couple of windows where you had the first window, which was, I personally think that the first Marco Silva window was good. The second one, not so much because you had players like Fabian Delft join the club. You had players like Alex Wobi, of course, uh, Moise Keen. Um, it, it, it just wasn't the best, the best window in terms of filling the holes we needed and filling them with players that were needed. I think in that window, I feel like we should have gone for a player like Ibrahim Sangare, uh, who at the time I think was was with Toulouse. Um, we just didn't sign the right profile of player, which again, I feel like was down to Farhad Mashiri more than anything. Really, Marco Silva was set up to fail. Um, so that really didn't work out. We lose Marco Silva. Um, and as soon as we lose Marco Silva, we get Carlo and Chalotti, which was the Hollywood signing that Farhad Mashiri wanted. And to be honest, I was gassed. I was so excited to have a manager like Carlo and Chalotti because look at the pedigree. Look at what he has done. He is one of the top managers in the world. And for one reason or another, you look at Carlo and Chalotti and you, you got to say it worked. But it didn't because what did he do for Everton? Yes, he had a fantastic start of the 2020-21 season. A fantastic start. We were second on the table at Christmas. We finished 10th. We finished 10th on the sea on us in a season where we in the midpoint of the season was second on the table and we finished 10th. We should have at least made Europe. That should have been a minimum for that last season. Europe should have been it. Carlo Ancelotti didn't do it. He got the call from Real Madrid and he left. And now we're here with Rafa Benitez. A manager which, personally, I don't give a shit that he was Liverpool manager. I care about the way he plays football and the way he conducts himself as a manager. For the first little bit of this season, I was happy because we had a manager that came in, he know he 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 coaches, which is something that apparently Carlo Angelotti didn't do. I thought that we were getting a manager who has an idea of the way he wants to play football, he will coach these players into that idea, and Everton will have some resemblance of an identity. Everton have no identity. There there is no identity for this football club, and Rafa Benitez's stubbornness and his way of playing football is ridiculous. It, it's stu it's stupid, and it doesn't fit with what Everton Football Club as a club need. So let's move on to Rafa Benitez and the problems that he he, he the pro here, here's the problem with Rafa Benitez. We have won one game in the league since September 25. September 25, we won against Norwich. We didn't win a league match until Arsenal in the start of December. And we still haven't won a league match since that Arsenal game. Hull in the FA Cup 
was the first win since Arsenal at the start of December. Granted, we didn't play a game in the latter half of December due to postponements and COVID and that sort of stuff, but Rafa Benitez has been in charge of an Everton team that has not won one game since the 25th of September. That is relegation form. We are at the bottom of the form table in the league since that point. We are 18th in goals per game. We are at the bottom of all metrics you can think about. We are in a relegation battle and that is due to Rafa Benitez. Let's look at the Luca Dean situation. I'm not going to go on and talk about this civil war between Rafa Benitez and Luca Dean. If Luca Dean doesn't want to be at the club, fair enough. Sell him, get a fee for him and get him out. Because that's not... We We need players that want to be here for Everton. And I don't think that Luca Dean has anything wrong, anything bad to say about Everton. I just think that he didn't agree with Rafa Benitez's style of play and how he wanted to implement Luca Dean into the squad. And that's fair enough. You can have those disagreements. But the problem they have with Rafa Benitez is he's stubborn. If he's backed into a corner, he will dig even deeper. If he is not getting the results that he wanted and he's getting criticized for his results, he will continue to play the same way that is ruining this football club. We are playing five at the back against Hull City. We played five at the back against Brighton at home. We played Seamus Coleman at center back at Hull. This manager is stubborn. If he's not getting what he wants, he will buckle down until he gets what he wants. If he has a disagreement with a player, he will just completely shut them out. That player does not play for Everton Football Club anymore. He will he will knuckle down on that. It doesn't it doesn't make sense. We got one good result against Chelsea using a five at the back, and now every single game since we've played a five at the back, it makes no sense to make a five at the back against Brighton at home. There are clear problems in midfield where we need a midfield three. We've been overrun in midfield for most of our games this season because this manager refuses to put another person in the center of the park. Look at the game against Arsenal. We started with a two. We were getting overrun. He brings Andre Gomez on, makes it a three, and it changes the game. Look at what... Look, look at that. Like, I t just... Rafa Benitez is stubborn. And he's not going to get anything more from Everton fans unless he has a blinder of a second half of the season. This season had to be perfect. This season had to be get the players in. We we are sort of in and around those European places by now and by the end of the season Europe had to be a minimum target. If he didn't get Europe then that's it. He's sacked. It had to be a perfect season for Everton fans to accept that he is our manager because fair enough you don't, if you don't like him that's fair enough. But he, need, but he needs to be a figure that we as fans can back. That has not happened. Rafa Benitez does not have the backing of any Everton fans. And that's the problem. Because if the fans are behind you, and if the fans aren't like cheering on the team, because the, the figurehead behind the team is not someone that they support, that's the problem. Fans are the 12th man. If you don't have Goodison Park behind you, you will lose games. This man does not have Goodison Park behind him. He's playing shit football. He's getting fuck all results. For, for, for me personally, he's got to go. And you could argue, who do you get in? And I'm in that boat. I want stability at the football club. I want someone to be here for multiple transfer windows. Look at the past six years. We've had, what, five managers in six years? Something stupid like that. We need a manager who is going to get in there, give us an identity, and then be that manager until we get to Bramley Moore Dock. I feel like the board and Farhad Mishiri thought that Rafa Benitez was that guy. A steady hand to take us into the stadium and then we move on from there. But he is not he's not a steady hand. The the appointment was controversial. The way he conducts himself is controversial. The, the football is god awful and we're not even getting results. Look at Sam Allardyce, right? We played shit football under Sam Allardyce, but we got results. We got results. He this Rafa Benitez plays shit football. And we're bottom of the league table. We are in a relegation fight. Everton should be nowhere near a relegation fight. But we are because of this manager and his stubbornness to and the way he conducts himself. It's ridiculous. For me personally, he's got to go. He's one of the reasons why I was so shit. Financial fair play. Now, this is an argument that a lot of people bring up when they when people are criticizing Rafa Benitez and say, oh, he had no money to spend. And while yes, he didn't have money to spend. 
in the summer window because of FFP. Well, if you don't know what FFP is, I'll break it down in a very, very simple and quick way. Financial fair play basically means that the amount, the amount of money you spend, you need to at least make it back. It just means that so no Wiggins happen again, no Leeds is happen again, um, no Berries happen again. Basically, just so that we that football clubs can maintain uh, and be stable and, and not have any financial troubles in terms of not being able to pay off the money that they spend. So let's say for example you sign a 30 million pound Alex Awobi, that's 30 million pounds you've just lost. If you do not sell any players that for a 30 million value or more, you can then not spend. Farhad Mashiri can have all the money in the world, but he cannot inject that money because Everton don't make enough money to sort of balance the books in an FFP sense. And that has been the problem. Look at the window, and we've talked about it now, and I've sort of hinted at it, of 16-17. The window where we signed 15 number 10s. We had Jordan Pickford, Michael Keane joined the club, David Clarkson joined the club, Sandra Ramirez, who else joined the club? Wayne Rooney came back. Uh, Sigurdsson came for a club record 50 million. Like, it was a mess. It was an absolute mess that summer, and that was down to Ronald Koeman and Steve Walsh. Fahad Mashiri gave them the keys, and they spent all the money, and we are still in a situation where we are affected by that summer. Summer is like, okay, let's say for example, let's not even look at that window. Alex Awobi for 30 million, shambolic. Absolutely shambolic deal, something that should have never been done, and again has cursed us in an FFP sense, which is why in the summer, this most recent one, we signed Asmir Begovic on a free, Andros Townsend on a free, and Damara Gray for 1.7 million. That was it. We are still struggling. We need to sell Luca Dean to finance the moves for Vitaly Miklenko and Nathan Patterson, which granted is, is good business in my personal opinion, but Everton needed to be smarter. We got the money, but we couldn't do a Man City. The current rules, the FFP rules meant that no one can ever do a Man City. No one can ever do a Chelsea again. And that is what something that Newcastle fans will, will come to understand is that you may have all the oil money in the world, you cannot spend all of that oil money if your football club doesn't make enough money. That's in terms of ticket sales, that's in terms of uh, merch sales, so like jerseys and stuff like that, that's the pies at the, at, at, the, at the canteen, at the stadium, that is the sponsorship deals, that is everything, all the money that the football club makes. If, if, if the football club makes 100, 100 million pound, but you spend 150 million pound on transfers, the next FFP window, you will be in a in a red zone. So you will have to sell players in order to make that. The problem with Everton is that we have signed the wrong type of players that have no sell-on value. Look at Morgan Schneiderlin, look at David Clarkson, look at Wayne Rooney. Like we've we've signed players on the wrong end of 25 on big money. And they and we can't get a transfer fee from them. We can't, we literally cannot because one, no one wants to pay for them. And, and players like, for example, Chang Tosin, who was on ridiculous money, who we played, who we paid ridiculous money for, will not leave the club because he will never ever make as much money as he's making at Everton Football Club ever again. So we will milk the club dry of all the money that he's contracted to. And that's it. And we've lost that money. We've made no money off of him. He sucked the club dry of millions of pounds worth of wages. And that is a not, that's a that's a complete loss for the football club. The squad is very, very interesting. Um arguably now it's sort of turned around in terms of an I Okay, the, the way I'm gonna explain this is look at look at Everton's first eleven. Jordan Pickford, Ronald Koeman, and Steve Walsh. Uh left back. Obviously, Vitaly Mikolenko, which is a Rafa Benitez signing, but before that, it was Luka Dean, who was a Marco Silva signing. Our two best centre backs, I would argue, are Yerry Mina and Ben Godfrey. Yerry Mina, Marco Silva, Ben Godfrey, Carlo Ancelotti. Right back is still Shameless Coleman, who was a David Moy signing, and we've just signed Nathan Patterson, who is a Rafa Benitez signing. In the middle of the park, you have Decore and Allen, who are both Carlo Ancelotti signings, and then you have the front three Domari Gray, Rafa Benitez, Dominic Calvert Lewin. Uh, is a technically he was a Ronald Koeman signing, uh, Richarlison, who is a uh, Marco Silva signing, and on the right you could say Anthony Gordon, who was academy, but you know we'll have we'll say Andros Townsend for argument's sake, who was a Rafa Medina signing. Look at the amount of managers that was that the, the amount of players that were signed by different managers. 
look at the different styles that those managers play, and you see the problem with Everton's squad. Everton's squad is shit. We have an awful squad. It is, is I would say, the first 11 is fine. They challenge for Europe, but you can't challenge for Europe with just the first 11. You need a decent squad behind that, and our squad behind that is shit. It's, it's awful. We have had two goalkeepers on the bench for too long. If you need to fill your bench with your second and third string goalkeeper, there's a problem with your team. There's a problem with your squad. And that problem is that too many managers have had their hands on this squad. And this, this squad as a whole is just a clusterfuck of different managers' ideas, identities, and preferences on what players they want. I've said it before, I said at the start of the video, what is an Everton player? You cannot tell me what an Everton player is. I have no idea what an Everton player is. Maybe the, the, the last time I can think about when I knew what an Everton player was, was David Moyes. I have no idea what an Everton player is because Rafa Benitez has a different idea of what an Everton player is. Carlo Ancelotti has a different idea of what an Everton player is. Fahad Mashiri has a different idea of what an, uh, an Everton player is. Like this squad is built up of, of, of just pieces of different managers, ideas and philosophies and it doesn't work as a cohesive unit. Granted, this squad has had a decent turnaround with Rafa Benitez and I will give the club that. I will give him those props because Demario Gray, arguably one of the best signings this season in the Premier League. Uh, Salomon Rondon is is pretty shit. So we're going to we're gonna put that to one side. Uh, Andros Townsend has been a breath of fresh air. Like to be fair, he's, he's come in and he's worked hard and he's realized um, that the opportunity that's been given to him and he's done fairly well for himself here at Everton. Uh, uh, Vitaly Miklenko, which and Nathan Patterson uh, are still sort of juries out, but the profile of those players are good. In on the right side of 25, can grow into being a good player, and if they do very well with us, we can sell them on for, for a fee that's larger than what we paid for them, and that's exactly what we need to do. This squad needs to think about a turnaround. We cannot think about, oh man, we'll sign this guy and this guy and this guy, and then we'll get into Europe, and then we'll win the FA Cup and all this bullshit. Everton, like the squad is so bad and I don't, I don't think people realize how bad this team is and it shows because we are in a relegation battle. Everton Football Club is in a relegation battle. Where, where do we go from here? I th Honest to God, I've stopped caring. I don't care anymore about this football club because this football club doesn't care about me. It's making decisions like signing Ra If Rafa Benitez was at any other football club, he'd be gone. We have sacked managers for less, and they're giving him the keys to the club. They're giving him more control in terms of transfers. They're giving him more control in terms of uh, staff. Like we've fired our chief scout. We fired our director of football. We fired our head physio. Like they're giving this guy the keys to the club, and he might not be here next season. So I, I don't. I genuinely don't understand what we're doing. I don't see what Everton Football Club's plan is. Is the plan just to float in the sea until we get into our big new stadium? Because that's what it seems like right now. I thought the plan was to get a manager in, have us be competing for those European places, be in Europe and be in Europe and be established in Europe by the time we get into Bramley Mall Dock because there's no point having this big fancy new stadium and being a mid-table relegation team. There's no point. We are moving into that stadium in three years. In three years, you're telling me Everton Football Club are going to be an established European team? The way that it's going right now, that is not happening. The rest of the season, what does it look like? What do, what do I think is going to happen? I think we're going to end up 15th, maybe lower than 15th. Uh, we'll fight relegation. Rafa Benitez will still be here at the end of the season. We'll go out in the fourth round of the FA Cup because we just drawn to Brentford. Um, and it'll, uh, just, it'll just be one of those seasons. I don't, I don't see how Rafa Benitez makes it past the end of this season. I don't see how we go into next season, next summer with him in charge and if we do have him in charge it's negligent from the football club it's the football club saying that we're just gonna completely buy into this man and 
I don't think that's something that we should do. Um, but yeah, uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like, comment down below what you think about the situation going on at Everton Football Club at the moment. And if you enjoyed this style of video, because I do enjoy like making this stuff. Um, so if you do enjoy and enjoy this type of video, uh, Harry and I will continue to do so. Um, not, not only just on clubs we enjoy, uh, there's a Newcastle video that's going to be coming out fairly soon. Um, so there's a lot of things that we're looking to do this year. So yeah, click subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys next time. Tell me I do what I please, and it ain't my Jesus peace. The diamond is shining on me, girl. Let me meet you at three. I'm too busy flexing my jeans. I'm too busy flexing my shit. I'm too busy flexing my wrist. I'm too busy flexing no bitch. You know me, I do what I please, and it ain't my Jesus.